So no food company wants to be involved in a recall, but recalls can occur for a variety of reasons. Some reach far upstream in the food supply chain. So understanding this, David, what can a food company do to prepare and ensure that it is recall ready should a crisis occur? Well, thanks, Lisa, and you make a great point because um, many food companies have experienced recalls, but also many haven't. And certainly there's many, many a food company I've spoken with who have commented, quote, well, we've never had a recall and we've never caused any harm. And so why do we need to bother? And I think a fundamental message is that crises and recalls happen to the best food companies in the world. Um, and I often use the mantra is bad things happen to good companies. And that's just the nature of the world in which we live in with the food supply. Um, it's fickle, it's challenging, it's very difficult to control 100%. So your point about being recall ready is, is a very relevant one and a very important one. So when it comes to understanding a recall, um, it really is, it's, it's a complex process, but, but one that, that fundamentally you can lay out. And a way to help manage that is to put together um, an internal um, SOP on how we're going to manage a situation. And one of the fundamentals around a recall is to say, well, am I in a recall mode or not? Um, sometimes you know you are because you'll get a call from a supplier and say, we've just shipped you something that we are recalling. And if you've used it in your project, in a product that you've made, you, you need to recall it. So if we back up a little bit and we begin this thinking about what are the different ways in which information flows in that could trigger a recall? Um, that example is a very clear cut one. So you may get a call from a supplier that, that is basically telling you to do a recall because they have, that's, that's easy. Um, other areas where you may get information flowing into your facility could be through consumer complaints if you're facing consumers or customers if you are selling your product to another customer. Um, you may get a call from a regulatory agency saying we've tested some of your product and we found a problem. You may get a call from a, an agency, which is pretty common these days, to say we found um, a number of illnesses that we have associated with your product. Um, we don't know for sure it's you, but you're on a short list and can you send us some information? So when you get those kinds of questions, the, one of the first things you have to determine is, am I heading to a recall? Yes or no? And so having a process in place to understand the severity of the situation, what the scope of the situation is, and should I be planning for a recall? And if so, how big and when do I need to do it? And how urgent is it? Are all part of the planning. So fundamentally, the, the, the strategy to successfully managing these situations is, is, to, is to have a plan, is to put together a team that's practiced the plan. Um, recall simulations, crisis simulations, a very important part of that in terms of making sure that your plan is going to work. Um, are the situations going to elevate quickly within the organization, i.e. get to the right people? Are the decision makers involved? Um, do you have the records to be able to define the scope of a recall? Who's received a potentially recalled product? Lots of, of, of complexity that you don't want to be working through in the heat of the moment. So fundamentally, if you haven't had a recall, I'm, I'm happy for you, but what likely you will. If you had, I'm sorry for you, and likely you'll have another. So um, the reality is be prepared. That's a fundamental message on all of this. So what does TAG provide to assist companies with recall and crisis planning and preparedness? So as we, at least as we think about, um, about crisis planning and preparedness and recalls in general, you can think of it in two different verticals. One is the planning around being prepared for a recall. So what do I need to do and how can TAG help you do that? And the second is reacting to a real life situation when something comes in and TAG works with both. So um, a significant part of what we do is help companies prepare for a recall. And in order to do that, we will work with the company to figure out you know, who are the right, the key players, um, look at the process whereby information comes in, who does it go to, how does it escalate, what's the, what's the thinking process, do you have the right experts um, 
to hand, either on retainer or at least have the have their contact information to be able to quickly get to people if you don't have the skill set, and that might be legal, it might be to do a health hazard evaluation, it might be a toxicologist, it might be public relations, communications, um, regulatory advice, there's lots of different things to think about. So what TAG does is help you think through that process and create a template, a, a protocol, if you don't have one or review one that you do have, to try to optimize it. Linked to that, we regularly do what we call crisis simulations or recall simulations. And some companies regard that as a traceability exercise. And, and in our view, it's way more than that. The ability to trace product is one part of a crisis response or a recall capability. It's all the rest of it that is also very critical around who's involved, how quickly is involved, who gets to know is the information flowing. So in other words, if you have, if you're operating three manufacturing facilities and you get a consumer complaint come into each one of those separately, would that information link or would it be regarded as, as a one-off event times three? In a, whereas in reality, it's three things in the same product, potentially the same ingredient, just three different facilities. That's just a simple example of making sure the systems work. The other part of that is providing 24 seven support should you have a situation that you wonder if, if, it's, if you're heading to a recall. And often those situations begin with um, a call from a regulator, a call from a client, a call from a customer, <clears throat> and you don't, you don't know how much trouble you're in. So TAG is, is, is typically involved early as we're looking at this and determining whether in fact, you are likely heading to a recall. Do we need to contact the regulators? If so, what's, what's the script for that? What do we tell them um, about what we're doing, about the risk, et cetera, et cetera. So it really falls into being prepared and, and, and tag working with you to maximally prepare you for, for, for a crisis or a recall. And then the second component is to work with you closely should you be in one of those situations.